Do you sabotage your life because you have the wound of rejection? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sylvia Salo and I help light workers and star seeds to remember who they are. And today I want to talk about the wound of rejection and how it shows up in your life and how it makes you sabotage your life without even realizing it. The rejection of course starts from the childhood. So maybe one of your parents or both or your broader family or maybe your friends rejected you or they rejected some aspects of you. Maybe you were a highly sensitive child or you were a spiritual child or maybe you were just different and they didn't fully accept you. And this can be a fact or you maybe just felt that they didn't receive you. It doesn't really matter to the subconscious mind because the result is the same. And so what happened is that you feel like you are this beautiful miracle that, you know, appeared to be in this planet, in this life. You were born to your parents and they are maybe not so excited about it or they don't act that way. And you feel being rejected. Because of that, you will learn a pattern of self-rejection. You will be rejecting everything else in your life. You will project your original wounding of being rejected by the parents onto your relationship with your life purpose. You will show up only a little bit. You will put in a little bit of effort. You will never do your best. Because if you did your best and you showed how much you actually care and you were rejected then, then you would you feel like you wouldn't survive it. You wouldn't survive that pain. And so you develop this persona that says, I don't care. It doesn't matter. You might start to think, oh, I'm too spiritual for those people. Or it's my last incarnation. So why better? You develop all kinds of illusions in your mind to convince yourself that you don't have to fully show how vulnerable you actually are, how much you actually care and love. For instance, you will uh, enter a series of relationships in your adult life. It can be with your family-in-law or your partner, or friends, colleagues at work. It can be with anyone. And you will assume that they will reject you eventually. You will therefore try to seclude yourself in advance. And you will just assume that they will not get you. You will tell yourself that you are different. Or maybe they are not too spiritual for you to have a conversation with them. And so you will put up walls the rejected children who then become adults, they always will feel fear and think that they are going to be rejected. And of course, it's likely not a conscious thought. So you will put in lots of subconscious action and choices that will perpetuate that self-fulfilling prophecy. So you will not actually let other people in. And you will assume that other people are the same way as your caregivers. You will assume that they will ridicule you, laugh at you, that they will hurt you, they will reject you. You will project the same idea onto the whole world. So when it comes to your life purpose, you will think like, it's not safe for me to live my life purpose because these people will judge me. And yes, maybe they will. And that's okay. But with that rejection, what's the most important is that you stop rejecting yourself and you stop rejecting your gifts, your dreams and your inner genius. You stop rejecting where you are actually good at and what you truly need and want. So you allow yourself to admit to yourself who you are, who you truly are. Because maybe you realize that you do want a beautiful, harmonious relationship. That maybe you don't want to live alone in your cave. Maybe you care so much about, I don't know, writing a book. 
that you are so afraid to, you know, put yourself out there. And so maybe you admit to yourself that you do care and you care very deeply and it's okay to care deeply. It's okay to want to see the results of your effort. You want to see the results of where you put your heart into. And it's okay to have it there. It's okay to care. Because with a wound of rejection, you convince yourself that you don't care. You don't care if you don't have friends. You don't care if you are alone. You don't care if your life purpose is not working out. You don't care if you are stuck in a job where you don't want to be. Because you are used to rejection. And you continue rejecting your own dreams. And you don't give a chance to yourself to truly succeed. Out of fear that other people would reject you again. And deep down there is almost this like teenage-like rebellious self, the anger self, that is like, I'll do it, I'll show up, but I will do it just because I have to, and I will not allow myself to enjoy the process, and I will never give it my 100%. You will reject the full fulfillment of your dreams because you have certain vision and you don't allow yourself to embody that vision a hundred percent or more. Because what if you were rejected for it? And so here the solution is that you stop rejecting yourself. You truly deeply accept yourself. And it's very healing to take a moment to admit to yourself what you actually care about. What are the things that matter to you? What are the things you want to see the results? What kind of relationships do you want to have? Admit to yourself what you want, what you need, what you desire. And then also look at the places where you may not be fully accepting yourself. Because when we are afraid of that external rejection, we are rejecting ourselves. It's because we haven't accepted ourselves. So you maybe accept yourself to a certain degree or in certain areas of your life, but you don't accept yourself fully. So it requires that ultimate self-love, where you truly are there for yourself. And then it doesn't matter anymore if other people reject you, yet it can still hurt. But if you give something 100% and if you do the things that are aligned with your values and with the dreams that your soul has, you truly give it your 100%. It will not like hurt in that way like when you betray yourself. So if other people reject it and you, you know you did your best, you will still feel like, okay, I did what I had to do and I will still do it again. And by doing it, it taught me something and I grew as a person. And yes, it's not so nice that people reject it, that they don't understand it. But I accept myself. I am there for myself. So this level of certainty within yourself is necessary to develop. Because otherwise, you might be sabotaging your life. Ask yourself... Are you sabotaging your relationships because you are afraid to be rejected? Ask yourself, if you were not afraid to be rejected, how would you show up for your life purpose? If you were not afraid of rejection, what kind of health would you create in your physical body? It's also related. Look at all those areas of your life and ask yourself those questions. Are you doing something because you are afraid to be rejected? Do you open your heart in the relationships just a little bit so that you always keep that back door? You never fully commit. And is this aligned with your deepest truth? Or do you actually want love? But to have love, we need to love, right? Then it doesn't matter again if the other person loves you back. Because if you, if you do things 
at a hundred percent, when you have that vision, clear vision, you have clear values, you know what you are doing, you know what you care about and you go fully in. This is already when you receive. It doesn't have to happen through the other people necessarily. But when you are not afraid of being rejected, you also allow yourself to receive. So let's say you put only like 60% of your effort when it comes to living your purpose, maybe having a soul business or whatever it is. And because you put only 60% in, you limit your capacity to receive from your soul business. You don't actually allow yourself to receive there. The same with relationships, friendships. You are not fully in and because of that, because you assume that other people will hurt you, you don't receive that love from other people. So just like a child, you are cut off from receiving love. You learn to internalize it and now you just go a little bit in and leave the rest like undone so you don't receive. So now let me know in the comments below how does this topic resonate with you? Do you feel like you have the wound of rejection? And how would it look if you showed up 100%? How would your life look differently? if you were not afraid that you might get rejected? How would you live your purpose? How would you do your health, your relationships? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share this video, and I see you next time.